Hey, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and we're working in the garden today. I'm going to give you a quick recap of what we're doing to prep our Florida garden for the fall and winter. All right, so we are working in the garden today. Say hi, Allie. <laughs> um, we've started setting up one side of our uh, garden pallet fence wall over here. We got some free pallets. These are heat treated so they don't have any nasty um, chemicals and stuff that will seep into the ground. So we are basically just kind of bracing them together and then anchoring it down with a couple of extra little reinforcements here and there. But we're hoping to fence this whole area up so we can keep those goats out and the cow. Um, we also have some straw here that we're going to be using for mulch. So once we get this up, I'm going to have the kids go in and kind of spread it all around here. Okay, because we already tilled all this soil up since it had been touched. It was quite compacted, so we had to till this up. But. So here I just wanted to show y'all, if you have seen my how to make a raised garden bed video, and we use just regular untreated wood for them, and although it does rot, I did want to show you how long they lasted. The smaller ones that were made of 2 by 4s obviously rotted faster, like this. Okay, but, and this is another one with two by fours that I had double stacked up. And this, I can't even remember how much I bought it for, but it was really, really inexpensive. So three. now the thicker ones that I use here with the two by eights are obviously still going. You can see that they haven't crumbled just yet. One of them is starting to fall apart here on the side here, my daughter's flower garden, to use untreated uh, pine to make your raised garden beds. For me, I think it's worth it versus trying to get something that's gonna last a little bit longer uh, but still has nasty chemicals that leach into the soil for growing your food. So I did want to show y'all what happens to the raised garden bed so that you can make the decision of whether or not it's worth it for you to last that long. Mind you, we live in north central Florida, so we do get a lot of rain here over the summers. Uh, so it stays pretty wet. So there's even, you know, more of uh, the elements here affecting the untreated wood where we use it, okay? And for those of you that maybe are looking to start gardening and you want to know how to make raised garden beds, you definitely want to click on the video that I have right there for you so you can watch my step-by-step -step tutorial. They're what? Marigolds. They are marigolds. Allie loves to grow flowers, so you can see we haven't even planted anything, but her marigolds came up as volunteers from last season, so they're super cute, Allie. What kind of flowers are you going to plant some more this year? Blue ones, pink ones. Yeah, you're going to plant some more? Yellow ones. And yellow ones. These marigolds are super cute, but that looks super weedy. You got to clean up this garden bed, huh? <laughs> Help your papa cut it down so we can put some more power. Right cutting down bamboo we can have make our fence. Okay. Because what you're making a pile for you to get the towel. Al, you gotta cut it all the way down to the base of the thing. The bottom, like to here, look. Don't worry about these though. Anything, just just the bamboo. Pull these out. Like these blocks. That's to make it hard. Good. Good job, girl. Good catch. So, I knew I was going to fall just right there, though. I had to use my hand. <laughs> now, because it's been kind of like an ongoing summer here, even though it's, we're already in November. Uh, in Florida, we went ahead and planted some buckwheat, and this is what you see that's left over. We just stomp it down, basically, and do it as a cover crop, just to help it grow a little bit, because it grows really, really fast, and to add just uh, some more nutrients to the soil before we get ready to plant it and mulch everything. Yeah. 
So we're working on fencing up our garden. It's about 18, 1850 square feet or so, and we're using some pallets that we got. So we're repurposing these. Now you have to be careful when you're choosing pallets because some of them are kind of uh, pressure treated with nasty chemicals that you definitely don't want in a, a, a food or a veggie garden that you're gonna be having. The ones that we got from a local friend here are actually heat treated. So they don't have any chemicals in them and they work great for this purpose. So we're just kind of laying the pallets on their sides. I have some regular pine boards here. These were eight foot long and I got them cut in half and they're not treated at all. So these will eventually rot, which is fine because so will the pallets eventually. So this is kind of a temporary solution and it's pretty much free. I spent maybe 20 bucks, 20, 25 dollars on these boards, um, getting enough so that it can go around the entire garden. So that with a drill and some deck screws and I'm basically just reinforcing them and laying them on the ground in a straight line as best as I can and we're gonna work our way all the way around the garden and that's gonna help us keep the goats and the cows and even the dogs out of the garden. So here I'm gonna show you on the label of these pallets something to look out for. If you're picking up pallets from a local business or somebody and you're not really sure where they came from or what they've been used to transport, here is what you wanna look for. Something that says HT, which means heat treated, and that way you know you won't have any chemicals leaching into your soil for your garden. those for me right here in between these two so I can drill push the other one button. that one go All right, guys, so it's getting toasty out here, but you can see we're just about done. What I've been doing also is we used to have like a little makeshift fence going on here, so we still had some metal T-post there. So wherever I hit the T-post, I went ahead and just zip-tied the pallets to it just for a little added reinforcement, okay? It's not the sturdiest fence in the world, but it's enough to keep our goats out and our cow. And I think it's gonna work great for our vegetable garden. All right, guys, I'm almost done. Got a few more pallets to put in and close this off right here, you can see. So I just wanted to stop at this point, just kind of show you how it's coming along. We just have to connect that end to right down here and put a little door. It's gonna be a makeshift door for now because I don't have any hinges on hand, but I'll make it like a, an actual pallet swinging door eventually. But I'm glad that we're almost done, so it's looking good. All right, so we're working here on the long edge and you can see that it's quite flimsy. I don't have any metal T-posts like I had along some of the other sides that I can zip tie it to. So what I'm doing on these sides that don't have T-posts already in the ground is I'm just tapping in some stakes and then I'm taking some heavy duty zip ties and I'm gonna zip tie these boards right here at this join of these two pallets. And I'm gonna zip tie it around so that this stake can help kind of pull this side of the fence forward. See, if Jonathan lets it go, don't let it go completely. <laughs> let it go a little bit. So because the pallets are just sitting on the ground, 
I need to help stand it up with these stakes. If you have T-posts, you can use that. If you have just wooden stakes, I just hit these a little bit into the ground, uh, just enough so that I can zip tie it together. All right, John, let it go. Much better. All right, so we'll do that a couple of different ways down this longer uh, wall of the fence, and then we should be good to go. All right, we are done. Look at this thing. I have to get like, I haven't decided if I'm gonna do the door like with proper hinges or, um, or what. Right now, I just zip tied it just so that this one pallet that I'm using for the door doesn't fall over. So it's anchored there. You can see it's anchored to another pallet, but then also to the metal T-post that I already had there um, to brace that corner. So two zip ties, and I just kept them pretty loose. That way I can still kind of move the door back and forth and the zip tie is not too tight on it. It's just enough to anchor it and hold it standing up. Since it's just us really that's going in here, you can see, let me put my phone down real quick. But you can see I just can lift it up and then here, I think I'm just gonna do like a little, uh, the little loop things, you know, just to keep it shut, but something easy enough that the kids can still get in, um, but the goats won't be able to, so that'll be good. But for now, I just kind of lift it like this, and you can see that the, the zip ties are just enough to kind of just hold that pallet up. So a quickie fix there, just to get the job done. I'm gonna go through and kind of clip these ties, but you can see that these are some heavy duty zip ties. They don't need to be that long sticking out, so I'll just clip them somewhere here, but I think these came out really really handy they worked out with the stakes as some extra bracing on the inside a real simple easy and inexpensive way to fence up a garden and now what are y'all doing you're what you're putting the straw down and what are we using the straw for in the garden I know for mulch and that's so that we can keep the moisture in the ground when we water because in the winter here in Florida it really dries out and the soil can get really dried out and compacted and we don't want that so the kids are just going to be laying some straw down all this soil that you see here kind of that has a little bit of stuff coming up we put a cover crop that we smashed down already but all this has been tilled so we're going to go ahead and cover it up with the mulch the straw that we're using and then we're going to Figure out what we're gonna plant where, right guys? Right. Let's plant some carrots. Too. Yeah, we definitely are gonna plant carrots. We have some starts and then we're also gonna be planting some stuff from seed. So it should be super fun. And I can't wait to see this garden looking lush with a bunch of delicious veggies. Allie, what's your favorite veggie to grow in the garden? Um, carrots. Carrots, you love plucking carrots out the ground. How about yours, Jonathan? Uh, cabbage. Cabbage is yummy too. Radishes. Radishes. We all love planting and eating radishes here. Sometimes they're spicy and sometimes they're not. All right, guys, a nice thin layer all around the part that we tilled.